Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence. It keeps this channel ad-free. Hello folks, welcome to Ink Dependence. I'm Mike. Today we're taking a, look, taking a look at this ink. This ink, I will warn you, does have a slightly naughty name, so if you have uh, people in, the, in, in, in eye shot who can uh, read and you don't want them reading this word, maybe, uh, you know, click like and subscribe and then click away. Uh, but if, uh, I'm not going to say it out loud, but, uh, you know, if you don't mind it being on the screen, there there you go. So, this is, a, uh, this is an ink from Straits Pens. It is in their Honest Ink series, and um, it's, uh, it's called Sepia. So, this comes in a 30 mil plastic bottle. These are really nice bottles. They're like very, very sturdy plastic bottles. I like these a fair amount. I think they're a good size. They've got a good size opening there for putting a pen in, all that jazz. Not gonna be a problem to fill a pen in this for quite a while. These go for $14 at the only retailer I'm aware of in the US, which is Lemur Inc. I'll put a link down in the description if you wanna go and check them out at Lemur Inc. where I bought this um, for 14 bucks. So um, go over there and tell John at Lemur Inc. that I said hi, it won't get you anything, but you know, it's nice for people to know where you saw a thing. So let's look at this on some paper. Here it is on my usual Rhodia 80 grams per square meter paper. And as you can see, this is not what it's not what I would think of as a sepia ink. So in that sense, it is kind of uh, kind of crappy at being a sepia ink, and maybe that's why the name, I actually don't know. But uh, it's really a brown, it's a dark brown, kind of a kind of a burnt sort of brown, or uh, a brown black perhaps, maybe even a black brown. I mean, if you look at it in this writing sample here, you'll see that only in the little like swatches or sweeps or, I forget what these are called, there's a name for this little, thing. Uh, but in the middle of it, you can see where I was writing very quickly, it turns sort of light brown, but the ends are both sort of very, very dark. So I would be surprised if you find this shading much uh, on your papers. It's not really shading much on my papers. So uh, here I have the flow is slightly dry and I've had it in a very medium sort of nib. This is a pen by Ryan Krusak and it's gorgeous. This is one of his L16s, the large pen that he makes. And this is made of Ambuena Burl. So it's got these very different uh, colored, uh, you know, sections of wood and this one thing you can see like Look at this. How cool is this? I, I had to buy it. It was beautiful. I got it in Chicago several years ago. And it has a Yovo nib, and it's a medium Yovo nib, which means that it is pretty much middle of the road. There's nothing. Uh, it's neither wet nor dry. It's just uh, it's a really solid performing nib. But with this ink, it is a little bit on the dry side. And you can see in a couple of places, like up here in this little sweep right here, you see it kind of ran out. You can see here on the side of the C, it kind of uh, skipped a little bit. That could be partly because this paper is as Rhodia, uh, it is coated, and so it's kind of slick. And sometimes when you have a drier ink and you write quickly, it will just sort of skip instead of uh, instead of writing a full line. It's just not to, it's not like dragging the ink out of the pen, you know. So that could be part of it. Otherwise, it's just a little bit on the dry side, not enough to irritate me really, except for when I do things like that and I'm like. Mm. But that doesn't happen very often, and it didn't happen on most of my other papers that I've used here. Uh, qualities, I put very, very mild shading. Well, I put very mild, but I'm gonna add an extra very, maybe a double modifier to that mild, because uh, you're not really gonna see shading in this ink very much. It's a very, very dark brown. So not really of a sepia, at least not in my opinion, more of a black brown. Swatches will so show shading. We'll see some swatches here that will show you some shading, and you'll see that perhaps on some other papers, but not really on this one. So let's go ahead and do the water test, and then we will We'll uh, look at it on some uh, whole bunch of papers. We'll take a look at some comparable brown inks, maybe a lot of them, because I have a lot of brown inks. Wow, this is a one mil syringe and it holds so much less water. One mil doesn't, like, seems like it's gonna be more than it is. I'm used to having a larger syringe. All right, good enough. All right, so let's mop this up. My one mil of water that I used here. Uh, we're not in a drought. We have thunderstorms today, but you know, just uh, conserving water. That's it. We're being eco-conscious. Look at that. That's really interesting. I that's I wasn't really sure what to expect uh, with this ink, although I had some idea because I've seen the chromatography, uh, and you can see there is some gray there, which is interesting. Not much brown left over, but that's absolutely readable. So I'm gonna say this ink is actually <laughs> actually has some water resistance. I mean, some of it comes away, of course. But if you spill your coffee on this, as I am wont to do sometimes, uh, you're not gonna have you're not gonna have a total loss or anything. Okay, let's look at the chromatography. 
which is right here. And the chromatography for this, I think, is very cool. Look at all this gray, and then we have, I don't know, maybe a little bit of green and some reddish browns and a little bit of, a little bit of almost yellow right in there. So really interesting, and this kind of told me that maybe this would have some water resistance. And uh, it turns out it kind of does, so that's neat. Okay, let's check out some papers. Here it is on my usual Staples 20 pound, 30% recycled copy paper uh, from this me medium Yovo nib, and you can see that there's nothing really going on here as far as problems. There are, if you're being very, very picky, some very small uh, feathers here and there but this paper is the worst, so I'm not terribly surprised. And then on the back here, just a few little dots came through in various places, but I mean, as you can see from the rest of these, almost everything bleeds through this with like very few exceptions. So yeah, not surprising, pretty good, I would say, for this bad copy paper. I think you could definitely use this in the office, maybe just don't tell people what the name is. This is Domtar Bold 20, uh, 28, I believe, 28 pound paper. And this is from a blank slate paper company uh, pad that I had made. It looks very cool, and uh, I'll put a link down in the description for these as well. But you can make your own, you can make your own pagination, not pagination, you can make your own, you know, lines and dots and all kinds of things on these things. And this is just some transcription from the 99% Invisible City by Roman Mars and Kurt Kolstedt, which I have been transcribing for a while. And uh, you can see nothing came through here. Well, maybe a couple of dots, but I really, just looking at it with a naked eye and not having a whole bunch of light on it, you really aren't gonna notice that. It's totally usable on both sides of this paper for sure. This is a fairly fountain pen friendly paper, but it does uh, absorb the ink more readily than things like Rhodia and such like that. So kind of medium grade paper. Then here is wheat straw paper in my currently inked Inky Fingers notebook. Wheat straw paper is actually pretty hard to find right now. I, I have it in reams and such because I love it, but the closest analog is really going to be sugarcane paper. So if you're looking for this, look for some sugarcane paper. And here on this paper, you can see that it's actually a fair amount lighter than it is on these. I I'm not exactly sure why. Perhaps it's soaked in like more or differently or something. I would be tempted to say that this has uh, like aged in the pen. Sometimes it'll happen, you'll have a little bit of evaporation from your, uh, your ink supply and it'll get darker, but this is also, this is a swatch from today and this is a fresh fill of this pen because I ran it out. I've really been enjoying it in this pen. So uh, I think it's really just this paper that makes it look lighter, which is pretty interesting. Then, next up, and lastly, uh, this is a Galen Leather Everyday Book. This is Tomoe River Paper, and there is your sepia, uh, there's your sepia sample. And as you can see, it's very different on this paper than it was here. And look at the, look at the difference in tone between these two things, right? Much lighter on this wheat straw paper. I don't know why. Just paper and ink and pens do that sometimes. So let's look at some comparisons. Here's the Straits Pens. Uh, sepia there, and you can see it is quite brown. And then, interestingly, when I was looking through these, I found this one, which is taken from a sample that I got from my friend Kimberly a few years ago. This one I bought this year pretty recently. I want to say it was the Atlanta Pen Show, so that would be April. This one I got in 2019, and it is demonstrably lighter, and these are the same papers. Might even be from the same pack of this paper. So I'm thinking maybe sh uh, the sepia has gotten a little bit darker in its formulation, which is interesting. Uh, I mean, it's a new bottle and all, so I think it's uh, maybe just a bit darker in formulation than it used to be, which is like, that's interesting. Uh, so if you buy this, I'm not 100% sure which you'll get, but I mean, both of them are pretty cool. Okay, uh, this is one that I would think of as being more of a sepia color. Sepia is traditionally kind of a, a light brown with some grayish tones. Think of, I don't know, old photography or perhaps even old movies. Not black and white exactly, but kind of sepia or like... Uh, like Abercrombie and Fitch ad materials, those uh, brands, that brand uses a very sepia tone on its pictures, and uh, it's closer to this than this, I think. But this one, uh, not not very not very much alike because I don't think this is sepia. All right, next up. Diamine Triple Chocolate, which is a step or two lighter than Sepia, but in the same vein. Van Diemen's Hollywood series, My Fair Audrey, which I don't think you can get, and this is slightly more yellow than Sepia here, but definitely in the same kind of family. Then uh, Diamine Nutcracker, which is, like, 
the same kind of color and actually maybe a little bit lighter, but it does sport green sheen, which is pretty cool. So this is from the 2019 ink vent. That's the blue series ink vent. Uh, it's that's pretty cool. Neckcracker is a neat ink. Then we have Papier Plumes Bad Bad Leroy Brown, which I think is very, very close to sepia here. And then lastly, Dominant Industries Lungo, which I think is also very, very close. This one's a little bit more yellow. This one is this one is almost like that's almost a dupe. I, I think those are so close. I wouldn't be able to tell them apart. I was expecting more sheen and such from Lungo, but I didn't really get it. I was a little disappointed in that, but it looks it looks a lot like sepia. So uh, there you have it. This has been Straits Pen's Honest Ink uh, Bleepin' Sepia. Bleepy, bleepy sepia. Go and check that out at uh, Lemur Ink. As I said, I think that's the only place in the U.S. that has it. You can probably buy it straight from uh, Straits pens down uh i'll put a link down below in the description uh so you can probably get it from straight from them if you're them if you are closer to singapore okay so thanks very much for watching hit that like button leave a comment below of some kind tell me does this look like sepia to you what is the thing in the world that you can uh like bring to mind like remind you of sepia right what how are we gonna how are we going to differentiate those things? Uh, leave a comment. Hit that subscribe button. If you're here in this video, that means that you want to subscribe because you like this video. All right. See you later. Uh, or rather, you'll see me later. Peace out.